So we should be in. All right. Well, welcome, Rolla Public Library patrons. My name is Derek, and today we have got a special guest to present some information about the Ozarks and literature of the Ozarks. Steve has been involved with the literature of the Ozarks since the 1970s. He co-founded Ozark Review Magazine, and he was working while he was working as a newspaper reporter in his hometown. He's taught colleges, he's taught at colleges and universities in the Ozarks. He's written lots of reviews and articles and published award-winning novels and short fiction. And today he will be telling us about some of today's Ozark literary voices who are staying close to their roots while moving beyond the hillbillies and the holler stereotype. So I'm gonna hand it over to Steve. And Steve's gonna take good care of you guys. Thanks, Steve. All right. Thank you so much, Derek. Uh, yes, I'm. Uh, my name is Steve Wigenstein. Um, and uh, you can see there on the first slide, I hope that um, the title of my talk is The New Ozarks Literary Renaissance. Uh, you can see there are also my email address and my website. So if you wanna stay in touch um, after this presentation, please uh, feel free to do so. Um, uh, as Derek said, uh, when I was uh, just a pup, um, I was working as a newspaper reporter in uh, Piedmont, Missouri, and uh, some friends of mine and I decided to start a literary magazine. So we came up with this uh, uh, this guy here, Ozark Review, way back then in the night in 1978 and 79 and 80, and uh, I've been interested in the literature of the Ozarks ever since. Um, I remember when uh, I was publishing Ozark Review that the Rolla community uh, had a very thriving um, literary scene at the time, mostly associated with the university, but not entirely, uh, mostly poets, uh, but again, not entirely. Uh, we published people like uh, Jim Bogan, Eugene Doty, some of you may remember these names. Uh, Margaret Miniman was in our uh, magazine's pages and um, Patricia Patton. Uh, we also published Paul Johnson's poems, a very uh, fine uh, po poet and uh, actually got to meet a few of those folks uh, over the years. Um, lately, uh, one of the things I've been noticing is that I, I, I have been sensing a kind of new uh, development in the literature of the Ozarks, and that's kind of what I want to uh, share with you uh, today. Uh, the year 2019, I think, uh, had a couple of uh, things that, to, to me any, anyway, mark a pretty significant uh, step in that development. One of them was this, uh, the publishing of the second volume. I've got the, the picture there is the first volume, but the second volume of the History of the Ozarks, which is going to be a three volume comprehensive Ozarks history written by uh, Brooks Blevins, who teaches at Springfield, at, at MSU in Springfield. Um, Volume three, I am told, is due out in February, so that will complete the set. Um, and really, this is the first attempt at a, a comprehensive regional history that goes from prehistory to very nearly the present day, um, written by a professional historian. Uh, and it's also you know, one of the few works that really tackles the Ozarks as a cross state phenomenon. There's, you know, just about as much uh, effort put into the Arkansas side as into the Missouri side. So you get a really unified kind of comprehensive vision of of the Ozarks in this in this history. So the second volume came out last year. And I think that was one of the two really noteworthy things that happened in, in 2019. Uh, the other one was this, uh, the publishing of uh, the literature of the Ozarks, the anthology 
um, edited by Phil Howerton, who visited your library last year. Um, and, you know, there have been Ozarks writing anthologies before, uh, Yonder Mountain, um, Ozark, Ozark, uh, back in the uh, pre earlier decades. But they were kind of snapshots in time of what was being written at that moment. But this anthology, and if you if you uh, haven't looked at it, you owe yourself a trip to the library to check it out uh, and and just you know browse through its its many pages. Uh, this is the one that that attempted to again be a comprehensive overview of Ozark writing, both sides of the state line starting way back in the early 1800s and again going to the present day. So the, the publication of these two books um, in 2019, to me anyway, really marks a significant uh, development in the sense of the Ozarks as, as a culturally distinct um, and significant region that's deserving of this kind of attention. So um, to me, it's right now is a really encouraging time. Uh, if you're interested in literature, if you're interested in writing, to be uh, following the literature of the Ozarks or looking at the literature of the Ozarks because things are happening and, and they're really quite exciting. So what I'd like to do with this uh, talk is to kind of give you a quick survey, maybe mention some authors that you have not uh, run across um, and tell you a little bit about what I see happening in, in the overall, overall literature of the Ozarks. Now, when you think about Ozarks writing, when people talk about that, of course, they, they often the only thing they know is the shepherd of the hills, maybe where the red fern grows or the uh, the voice of a bugle, and if uh, if they're lucky, um, but if they go a little bit farther than that, if they penetrate beyond just those few uh, well-known works, one of the the people that they probably would know about and that that the people refer to a lot is Donald Harrington. And here's a picture of uh, one of his later books. Now Harrington has passed away. Um, that's a book called With, which is my personal favorite of, of his work. Um, he was a novelist from Northwest Arkansas, uh, grew up in Northwest Arkansas and, and lived there most of his life. Uh, really one of the two kind of landmark uh, contemporary novelists about the Ozarks. Um, and when people ask me to describe Donald Harrington, uh, what his work is like, you know, you hate to stereotype, but, but one of the, the names that comes to mind is, is Faulkner, uh, because like Faulkner, he creates this little fictional community and novel after novel after novel returns to this fictional community and, you know, he populates it with generation after generation of Ozarkers. Um, here's what Donald Harrington looked like in his later years, in case you're uh, interested. Um, now, unlike Faulkner, um, he's, he's a lot more whimsical um, about his, his, his imaginary community of, of Staymore. Uh, he, he was a great lover of the art of storytelling. Um, but like Wagner, he was also very interested in verbal pyrotechnics. So if you like a writer who is, is very adventurous, um, certainly Harrington is one that, that uh, we all sort of look to as a sort of uh, signpost. Now, probably the other one uh, in today anyway, uh, that people think of when they talk about Ozark's writing is Daniel Woodrell, his most famous book, uh, as I would guess most of us know, is Winter's Bone, a very, very short novel, almost really a novella, uh, which was made into a, a very successful movie. Um, and 
Woodrail is uh, quite unlike Harrington in style, although he is also very much into um, verbal precision and, and, and really a, a lot of verbal dynamism. But his works tend to be, well, I mean, they, uh, you could loosely categorize them as crime thrillers. Right? Almost all of the books uh, have a murder in them. And addressing that crime is often one of the key uh, challenges of the book or one of the key, key tasks of the book. So they tend to be much more accessible for that reason. Um, while, while still retaining the kind of literary quality that you associate with um, stylists who write about murders like uh, Cormac McCarthy and people like that. So if we mark the one end of things as being Donald Harrington's with sort of a whimsical storytelling, wild tale, tall tale almost kind of stuff, and, and the other side being... Uh, Daniel Woodrow, we've got a lot of room for uh, interesting things to happen. Uh, both of them really uh, employ the Ozark setting a lot. So, um, you know, uh, they don't, just, just because they um, are set in the Ozarks certainly doesn't mean that they are condescending toward the Ozarks. And, and in fact, there's a lot of real um, celebration admiration. But there are lots of other writers um, out there uh, who are working and who are not uh, yet anyway as famous as these two guys. And I just want to call your attention to a few. And I'll start with a few more novelists, or, or I should say with, with fiction writers. Um, this is a book, Dolly is Gone, by Katie Estill, uh, which also has a murder in it. Um, and, you know, Coincidentally enough, uh, Katie Estel is married to Daniel Woodrow. Uh, they live out near West, West Plains. Um, but this book is, is completely different in that um, it's very female-centered. Uh, there are three women at the center of this book. Um, the mother of the victim, uh, the neighbor, and the deputy sheriff, all of whom are female, so it's 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 not that kind of crime thriller type thing. We kind of know uh, who did the crime, and as the book goes on, our our sense of that becomes more and more solidified. So solving the crime is not really uh, central to the story. Um, it's more about how the characters react to this horrible thing that has happened to them and, and among them. Uh, it's very much into the consciousness of these characters. Unfortunately, Katie Estel has not yet published anything else after that. She had one book before Dolly is Gone, which came out in, I think, 2007. Um, and that's it so far. So I'm hoping for more someday. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see, I guess. Uh, but this is certainly a, um, a a really rich piece of fiction about, you know, a murder in the Ozarks, which seems to be kind of the popular theme these days, um, but uh, from with a very, very different take. Another writer who I think is well worth you uh, checking out um, is Steve Yates. And this is a picture of his his first novel, which is called Morkin's Quarry. Um, Steve Yates is from Springfield. Um, and he, uh, for his, during his uh, work on his master's degree, he, um, he studied at the University of Arkansas uh, and was very much influenced by Donald Harrington. And you see that in his style. He's another one of these writers who just Absolutely, you can tell they just love language. They're very deep into language. Um, he's, uh, his, however, are not um, that same kind of fabulation that, uh, that Harrington did. He, he'll uh, choose a different story each time, and there's not really a connection between them. 
Morkin's Quarry is a historical novel set during the Civil War uh, about you know the the hard times in Springfield. And he also has a collection of short stories called Some Kinds of Love, an absolutely beautiful short novel um, that, that's a love story uh, called Sandy and Wayne. And most recently, um, a novel that is called, now the title um, might give, make you think one thing. It's called The Legend of the Albino Farm. Um, but it, unlike what uh, a person might think, it's not it's not a horror novel about uh, there was a there is a, a legend of an albino farm north of Springfield and this kind of urban legend place you know that were supposedly populated by uh, mutants and things like that. What this what that novel does is actually takes the actual people or facsimiles of the actual people who owned the farm and goes into the idea of what would happen if there was this ridiculous urban legend about your farm, you know, um, oops, hit the wrong button there. This is, uh, Steve Yates who lives now, uh, lives in Mississippi. Um, but he's very much in touch with his Springfield roots. Um, and it's certainly a, a, a writer worth uh, taking a look at. I mentioned uh, West Plains. There's a surprising number of uh, really interesting literary people who live in West Plains or near West Plains. So it's kind of a, a, a hotbed, I guess. Uh, one of those <coughs> is uh, Craig Albin, who's, who uses C.D. Albin as his... Uh, uh, authorial name, uh, came out with a book of short stories called Hard Toward Home uh, in 2017. Uh, this book of short stories uh, was the recipient of the Missouri Library Association's uh, Book of the Year Award uh, that, that year. Really wonderfully crafted uh, short fiction. Um, he's also a poet and it has a collection of poems uh, that's out. Craig uh, Albin teaches at the campus of MSU in, in West Plains. So if you like short fiction, um, there is a wealth to be discovered out there of people who are writing about the Ozarks. And I'll mention him and two other writers who I think have a lot in common. So that's Craig Albin. Another writer that you should get to know is John Mort, uh, who had a collection published a couple of years ago called Down Along the Piney. Uh, John grew up uh, near Kabul, um, currently lives uh, near Springfield. Um, also uh, got a lot of range. Uh, he, he's a Vietnam veteran and he has a couple of collections of military fiction some of it set in Vietnam, uh, some of it elsewhere. Uh, but these stories are, are, are a really wide ranging uh, collection. And this one was the winner of the Sullivan Prize uh, from the University of Notre Dame Press a couple of years ago. It was uh, um, published by the University of Notre Dame Press. And that's a really a significant prize. And I would be remiss uh, if I didn't mention myself. <laughs> <laughs> this is my my obligatory plug, <laughs> and and I put myself in there because I do see uh, a lot of common commonalities between my work and that of John Mort and Craig Albin, uh, and that um, all three of us are really interested in the contemporary Ozarks. Um, the stories we write often have people in them who are. Um, I don't want to say at the end of their rope, but kind of near the end of their rope or, or in, in difficult, desperate situations. Um, we're interested in the culture and the, and the landscape of the Ozarks. My collection has just, just been released. Um, and it's a departure for me in some respects, because up till now, what I've been writing is historical novels. 
but some of these stories go back a long way and I'm really excited to have them collected to sort of show off another way that I have been thinking about the Ozarks um, over the years. So at the risk of uh, plugging my own work a little bit, I will mention that, uh, that that's coming out. Um, on a completely different note, you might run across if you're sorry if you just go to Amazon or one of those you know card catalog uh, places like uh, a WorldCat or something and type in Ozark, you might uh, run across this book called the Ozark Trilogy uh, by Suzette Hayden Elgin. And <clears throat> if you didn't know any better, you might think. Well, it's a trilogy of, of, of novels uh, set in the Ozarks, and it is in a kind of uh, that way, um, but it actually it's science fiction. And one of the appealing things about the Ozark trilogy is that it takes this kind of fictional Ozarks, you know, make-believe Ozarks, and puts it on another planet, right? Uh, and, you know, sort of the presumed story here is that people have fled the Earth in some distant future and settled this other planet. And one of the things that they, you know, carried with them is some kind of mountain um, mentality. And so you, you have a completely wild fictional sort of a universe set on a faraway planet that also has mules and grannies and things like that in it. Uh, although the mules can fly, the grannies have magical power, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, Suzette, Hayden, El Suzette Hayden Elgin, not a native of the Ozarks, um, she she wrote a, what was what was probably one of the most popular books. Um, in the self-help category back in the 1970s called The Gentle Art of Verbal Self-Defense. And that thing went through many, many, many printings and editions and versions and such as that. This is a picture of Suzette uh, Elgin shortly before her death um, about five years ago. Uh, but then uh, in later years, she moved to uh, Northwest Arkansas and was kind of inspired by that landscape. She's also a very prolific science fiction author and poet. And so if you're if you're thinking about something that involves the Ozarks, but that you but you have a fondness for science fiction, this might be something that's worth um, looking at. You know, a couple of things I would say in terms of, of theme is that a lot of the contemporary fiction of the Ozarks seeks to um, tackle or, or grapple with the, um, the Ozarks as a mythical place, as a, as a place of the imagination. Because you know, the, the wider public tends to know the Ozarks only through things like uh, Dog Patch, the comic strip, Little Abner's Dog Patch, um, Silver Dollar City, uh, the, the the TV series Ozark, uh, things like that, in which the Ozarks are this kind of um, you know hillbilly land kind of uh, kind of location, and and so one of the things I think we see is that contemporary writers are are grappling with that. They're trying to figure out how do I stay true to the Ozarks that that I experience or that I know, um, while at the same time addressing these, these cultural stereotypes without being, you know, just immersed in them or, you know, living within those stereotypes. So it's kind of a, 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 a constant challenge, a, a back and forth um, that writers are that are engaged in about the Ozarks. And it's part of what makes it, I think, a really um, fresh time to be reading about the Ozarks or writing about the Ozarks is that it's, um, it's stepped on past um, 
old hill folk with long rifles. And now we're, you know, when you, when you look around you these days and you look at the Ozarks, you see it's a very complicated place. So it's a place that's, that's really worth a lot of attention. Um, let me turn to uh, a, a few works of nonfiction. Now, when we think about nonfiction about the Ozarks, uh, you can, I think you kind of see two strands uh, going on. One is nature writing. Right? Um, and there's been some really wonderful nature writing about the Ozarks. This is, for example, Leonard Hall's book, Stars Upstream, which dates back to the 1950s. Uh, really one of the um, sort of uh, foundation works uh, about nature and, and the natural landscape of the Ozark, uh, you know, credited with really galvanizing public support in favor of the National Scenic Riverways. Um, a more recent uh, bit of nature writing, uh, but one again that you may have run across is this one, A Country Year Living the Questions uh, by Sue Hubble. Um, and, you know, I think both of these are, are what we would identify as classics. Um, perhaps A Country Year got a little bit overlooked uh, when it came out. Sue Hubble was a, um, a columnist for the St. Louis Post-Dispatch for a long time. Um, she had moved to Shannon County um, and you know, after having moved there, her marriage broke up and she remained in Shannon County and had to sort of take care of herself um, on her own and really experienced um, hard times. And this book is, is um, organized as a year, right? Through it's, it's you know, the, the passage of the seasons and what she learns about the landscape around her um, what she learns about herself and what she learns about the people she interacts. It's really quite a, a, a lovely book and it's got a, uh, got a very delicate kind of rhythm to it. Uh, so if you um, are interested in, in the writing about the natural world, I, I certainly recommend Sue Hubble's books. Um, she also in art, uh, one of the ways she made a living during her time within, in, Shannon County was to, to be a beekeeper. And she has another book called A Book of Bees, which is really a kind of deep dive into the world of, of bees uh, and what they do. Here's a picture of, of Sue Hubble. Uh, she too has uh, sadly passed away, um, but not before leaving us with some really uh, wonderful uh, writing about the Ozark. Now, the other thing, thread that you see a lot in uh, nonfiction writing is memoir. Right? So if we have nature writing, people looking out around them um, at the, um, uh, you know, the natural world. We also have people who are looking at themselves, where they came from, what it all means, how do we, uh, you know, how do we put it all together? Um, and, you know, there, there are lots and lots of Ozark memoir writers. Um, you, being from Rolla, you may remember Mitch James, um, who was a fixture in the landscape of the Salem Rolla area for a long time, a former uh, member of the Ozark Mountain Daredevils um, and also a, a comic writer. Um, and, you know, his stuff, it, it, quite a bit of it is memoir. One that is not uh, as well known, but it, I think is worth trying to hunt out is this book. It's called Rocky Comfort. Uh, and it's by Wayne Holmes, who was 
uh, a professor at uh, Drury University in Springfield for most of his career. But he grew up uh, in Taney County and Lawrence County. Um, in the during the depression, and what this book, how this book differs from a lot of the other kind of, if you go to to the local shelf, you'll see lots of sort of growing up in in the depression years memoirs. This one is different from that, I think, in that it, um, well, for one thing, it, it's a lot tougher. Um, he doesn't hold much back. It's bawdy. Uh, it's 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 rude uh, at points, and so you have to, you know, this is this is not the memoir with the rose-colored glasses on. That's for sure. Um, it's very much of a storyteller's book. Uh, each chapter is kind of, or you know, written like a like a uh, a story around the. Uh, the fireplace kind of, of thing, um, and it's you know it's 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 a tough book. Unfortunately, it is out of print. I think uh, it was published by a company uh, from Bolivar that has gone out of business, but you can still find it in used bookstores and and um, online stores and, and places like that. But it does take a little bit of hunting. Now, one that that's much more recent. In fact, it just came out. Um, I believe it's earlier this year, in fact, uh, is Ozark's RFD uh, by Jim Hamilton. Also very deep into memoir reminiscence. Um, he grew up uh, near Buffalo um, and, in fact, was the editor of the Buffalo newspaper for, gee, like something like 40 years. And these, uh, this particular book has its origins um, in the, his what used to be weekly columns that he wrote for, for the Buffalo Reflex and then later for, uh, for a few other newspapers as well. Um, they're much gentler, right? although they're also, you know, he doesn't look away from hard things. Um, but it, but the tone is is considerably gentler. Um, you can kind of sometimes still see the form of the newspaper column in it, in that you know when you're writing a column, it has to be a certain length and no longer, and you have to make it fit the space and that kind of thing. So there does tend to be a <clears throat> a, a feeling of that. But if you read it in small doses, then that doesn't that's not the sort of thing that would bother you. Uh, he's a very perceptive guy, Jim Hamilton, and uh, he, you know, while he writes about the past with a certain degree of nostalgia about his childhood, with nostalgia, he is also aware that um, his past is, you know, it's part of what being in the Ozarks is like, and that there were troubles and flaws uh, in it, and and people encountering hard times and, and tragedy. So it's it's not just a, you know, all the sweet things I remember, uh, even though there is a kind of sweetness of tone, um, but it's very precisely written uh, in the way that only uh, uh, a, a practiced newspaper writer can write, where, where you uh, really try to grow for the exact noun and the exact verb uh, all the time. So this is a, a a very recent book that's also uh, in the memoir vein uh, that I think is is great. Now, I will say that uh, nonfiction writing about the Ozarks is not often as literary as we might imagine. Um, most nonfiction writing about the Ozarks is at about a particular subject, and they, and they tend to be a little more workmanlike, although you will find literary nonfiction about the Ozarks from time to time. But it's maybe not quite as rich a vein as fiction and also poetry. So let me turn to poetry because poetry, of all things, is perhaps the hardest to find. Um, poetry tends to get published piece by piece. 
um, in literary magazines and small press publications and things like that. So if you're interested in poetry uh, about the Ozarks, you really have to go hunting for it. Um, luckily, there are publishers that are assembling a pretty good body of, of uh, uh, books of poems uh, from Ozark writers. And uh, a couple of these I want to uh, I want to highlight for you. This one is also uh, pretty much brand new. <clears throat> this came out uh, within the within the year uh, by Amy Wright Volmar, who lives in Springfield. She's a native of Southern Illinois, but she's lived, been in Springfield a long time. Um, Springfield is is beginning to really assemble a, a good crew of poets. Uh, in addition to Amy Wright Volmar, there's also uh, Karen Crago, who lives um, who lives there, who is our current Missouri Poet Laureate. Um, she works uh, in Marshfield. Um, I thought I might just read a couple of uh, of our poets, since we have, uh, uh, you know, reading an entire story is probably not sensible or a chapter out of a nonfiction book. But, but, but most poetry about the Ozarks these days is is of the lyric variety. So, uh, you know, they tend to be pretty short. Just to give you a little bit of flavor of what these poets are like, Amy Wright Volmar. Uh, is very much of a nature poet. She's really into the natural landscape and observing the natural landscape. Almost all of her poems, and you can kind of see it just from the cover of the book, which is a topographical map. Uh, she's very much a, uh, a nature observer in her poetry. Um, this is a poem, it's called To the Waterfall in Winter. So I'll just read that to you. If there is no path, create one. On deer hoof feet crush leaves, pause while your ears twitch and you scan the limestone ridge you're following. The black caves listen. Then slide three times on leaf hidden stones and so blunder at last to the waterfall. Sit on a rock so slant that you're leaning over a ledge trickle, a pool of wet chert gravel with oak leaf drain. The water slips, drips, chains, snaps over rock and moss that's the palest of greens. A bobcat's eyes peering through twigs. You may never know what inside you needs healing. But when the sedge wren lights on the vine at the base of your rock and you feel every speckle of her feathers, her pine needle feet, her vivid eyes trusting you, you will trust yourself to climb, if you like, as high as the cave up there by the sky where the waterfall starts. A cave too small for your shoulders, but through limestone pierced by rain for how many years? Hear how the waterfall begins. One drop. It's a nice poem. I like that poem. As you can see, she's uh, very observant about the world of nature. Uh, so if you like that kind of poetry, I certainly would uh, recommend checking out her work. It's a picture of uh, Amy Wright Volmar. Uh, another uh, poet worth paying attention to is Phil Howerton. The, uh, the editor of uh, the um, literature of the Ozarks. Uh, Philip Howerton has, is also very uh, kind of similar aesthetic to Amy Wright Volmar. Lots of poems about, uh, about the natural world and very observational in quality. Um, in addition to editing the literature of the Ozarks, Phil has uh, started a publishing company uh, and it, it, uh, it is making it, uh, uh, carving out a place for itself. It published Follow. It also published Ozark's RFD and it published my short story collection. So um, 
is really racking up some books um, in, with Ozark focus and Ozark themes. Uh, also from West Plains, by the way. Another West Plains uh, poet to get to know is Dave Malone. Uh, Dave Malone writes a lot of uh, memory poems. He, he, he really plums uh, his, his memory a great deal, childhood, um, incidents uh, from, uh, from his, his, his childhood, and also, of course, from, from the current moment as well. So um, he, he tends to be much more um, personal in his work than uh, Amy Volmar does. Phil Howerton's work is, is, I would guess, I would describe it as maybe a little more somber. Um, uh, you know, he's he, he tends to be kind of elegiac about the Ozarks uh, as a as a place that has lost something. Um, here's a picture of Dave Malone with me. Oh, here, this is at the uh, there's an annual Ozarks uh, cultural symposium. Uh, takes place down in West Plains, although, alas, we had to miss it this year, but it's usually there. So uh, people uh, usually show up in West Plains for that event. Uh, I'd also like to mention Carolyn Miller, who grew up in Pulaski County, as I remember from her uh, biography. Um, she's gone on to write several books of poems. She's not living in the Ozarks nowadays. Uh, she lives in San Francisco, but um, consistently writes about, uh, particularly about her childhood, um, about growing up in you know, near Ruby Doo Creek. If you're if you're familiar with Ruby Doo Creek, um, I'll just read you one of her poems. That's from this is from a book called Route 66 and Its Sorrows, <laughs> which is a I, I love that title. Uh, um, it's not entirely about the Ozarks. The first section is about her childhood growing up. And then the next section is about things um, after she has left the, the Ozarks really doesn't, the Ozarks themselves don't reappear very much. Uh, this, is, this is a poem that's entitled, Dark, Starry, Sticky Night, Missouri. We all know what that feels like. It's like falling into warm molasses, a dark sweetness in which you can barely breathe. It's like being drowned in blackness, thick and moving in slow waves around you, while above you shine the steady light of stars, and around you flicker the floating intermittent lights of lightning bugs. The smell of flowers grows even stronger on the warm tide of the night. All of summer welling into a flood of fragrance and a heavy mixture of sex and sorrow. And everywhere, cicadas and crickets are rasping out their brief, sentient lives. And off in the woods, a whippoorwill keeps calling that each moment is sweeter and more precious than any you will ever taste again. That's a good call. Um, and just finally, I would like to point out, um, this is, of course, this is by no means a um, comprehensive survey of everybody who's writing uh, about the Ozarks. And I, uh, I will encourage you to, to suggest other names or uh, recommend people for me to, to check out. But certainly here in, uh, in Rolla, you've got poets at work. Uh, one of whom I was uh, uh, did a reading with not too long ago, and that's Agnes Boita, uh, whose most recent book is called The Eden of Perhaps. Um, so appreciate your own. Uh, her work is more philosophical uh, than, the, than the others that I've read who tend to be much more um, into the observational lyric. She often will take uh, an incident or an, uh, a scene and sort of spin from it into some kind of uh, you know, more abstract observation, I guess. Um, I'll read you a poem uh, that's from the Eden of perhaps. Um, this is called Triptych on Highway 28. So it's actually three linked 
short poems. So first one, the snow laden sky hangs heavy as if bowing under a burden of unconfessed sins it cannot discharge. Pregnant clouds drag their swollen bellies over fallow fields that lie waiting for absolution. Two, I am driving toward the rainbow. The road runs straight for seven miles and ahead in the black February sky is the most vibrant rainbow I have ever seen. I'm alone in the car, singing and crying at the same time and bubbling with anticipation as I am heading to the rainbow's end. Three, it is raining again and the water pools on the road. Black-eyed Susan and Queen Anne's lace stand upright in the soggy fields. I pull off the highway onto a gravel road, stop the car and get out to pick flowers in the rain, don't care that I get soaked. I need to convince myself that I have not yet given up. The poem takes a, a wonderfully unexpected twist uh, at a couple of points in it. So the, the literature of the Ozarks is alive and well. Um, sometimes you have to go hunting for it uh, because they tend to be published in uh, small presses, kind of out of the way locations. Uh, but it is well worth the hunt. Uh, it can be a really rewarding thing to run across uh, a local uh, author. And with that, I'll say thank you uh, and put my uh, email address and my website address up again. Um, if anyone has uh, some questions they'd, uh, they'd like to ask or some comments they'd like to make, I'm, I'd be very happy to, to entertain those. So um, let me just check here. Let's see. I'm not seeing any que questions in my comments uh, thing here, but let me just look real quick. Um, on the event page. Okay. <laughs> Why a Renaissance now of uh, Steve Yates types? Okay. Um, you know, uh, first is to, to to Steve's uh, question. It's good to see you, Steve, by the way. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Uh, that's a hard question to answer. I don't know why, why, why now, other than, um, you know, I, I think the, um, the Ozarks have sort of lived in the, um, in the shadow of stereotype for a long time. And um, maybe there's just enough of a critical mass of people who are writing about it and thinking about it to create that kind, this kind of, of energy, I think. Um, interestingly enough, some are uh, affiliated with universities, you know, at West Plains, at Springfield, Joplin, and so forth. Some are not. Um, I think also the, the you know there's a little bit of a breakout in in publishing, so that uh, writers can get their work uh, seen. So maybe that's uh, um, part of what's going on. We'll have to think about this further. That's a good. That's a great question. I'm not sure. Um, Sharon Buzzard writes, I wonder how you would distinguish the themes of traditional Ozark lit uh, and then compare them to more contemporary writers. Have the themes changed? Um, well, I will, I will say this. One of the, the continuing themes um, and re, you know, one of the, the, the real beauties of the literature of the Ozarks anthology 
is that before every section, Phil Howerton would write a, a, a very detailed introduction. Uh, and I think he really lays out how, how the Ozarks has been perceived from era to era. And one of the uh, important changes, I think, is um, there, you know, in, in earlier generations, there was an awful lot of um, writing about the Ozarks by people who either condescended to it or didn't bother to understand it, but just used it as a picturesque setting. And we still see that today. Right? We still do see people who are looking at the Ozarks as little more than just, well, you know, it's a place where I can set a story that has, you know, hogs and and uh, hills and things like that in it, you know. Um, but but I think there's a, there's a great deal more of attention being paid to the actualities of the people. And I, I'll refer back to C.D. Albin's uh, short story collection. One of the things that I think is really important in that collection of stories is that the people in it um, are so diverse. And same goes with Down Along the Piney. They are not just one type of, of, of individual. They're not just one ethnicity. Um, there are people who, from all uh, all walks of life, and I and I am really encouraged to see that kind of enlarged diversity uh, in the kind of writing. Um, let's see, Harley Marie Blake says, "Thank you for the presentation. I very much and thank you for being here. I really appreciate it." Um, and uh, I will say that. Uh, you know, I have lots of fond memories about writers from Rolla. And, uh, you know, back when I was publishing, I, I got to know some of them really well and, and, and love their work. Uh, Phyllis York says, we love Steve's books. Well, thank you, Phyllis. <laughs> I appreciate that so much. That's uh, thank you for coming by. You're, you're so kind. <laughs> I will take that. Uh, I'll take a compliment any day. Uh, gosh. Well, uh, let me just watch for a, a, another minute here just to see if there's any further comments. But if not, uh, let me just remind you that I do, um, I, I, I keep a website going and also I, I maintain a blog uh, where I write about Ozarks matters uh, on an irregular basis. And it's been more irregular lately than usual, unfortunately, uh, when that is, uh, well, you can access it from my website there at stevewigenstein.com or the direct address is just stevewigenstein.wordpress.com. Um, feel free to, to uh, follow me there or to, um, you know, send me uh, questions or, or thoughts. Uh, I, I'm, I'm very happy to... Uh, learn from people. It seems like every time I do a presentation, um, I come away learning as much or more than I, than I imparted. So uh, that looks like uh, the end of the comments or uh, our questions at this point. So um, I'll throw it back to Eric. Um, oh. <laughs> Awesome, Steve. I I enjoyed it myself. I know well, we're getting a lot of likes and loves here, and I'm seeing a lot of good comments. I'm seeing a couple more. Uh, let's see, and where can I buy it? So yeah. where can they buy? I um, Sharon, what what are you looking? Which book are you oh, looking for? Scattered Lights, the new one. Uh, well, it's on all the online uh, platforms, of course. Um, I'll, my recommendation is Bookshop.org uh, because what happens if you go to bookshop.org, it will direct you to the nearest independent local bookstore to you. Uh, the price is the same as, um, as if you were to buy it on one of the big guys, but you're helping to support a local independent bookstore. So um, go to bookshop.org, bookshop type in um, it'll ask you for your location and, and uh, type in my name and it'll come up with um, where you where you can, you know, 
and it and it will it will hook you up with that bookstore, and they'll have it ready and waiting for you. Um, I'm gonna so, try to put a link uh, down there. Yeah. See if I can get a link. Share lights. Yeah. Well, I I highly recommend using Bookshop. And there's John Mark chimes in with with uh, with hello and and I will say we we do feel mm -hmm. isolated these days that's for sure and and uh, certainly Facebook live presentations are are you know they're great but they're not the same <laughs> and so I long for and I hope for the day when we can actually say hello again in person to all of our uh, friends and readers Oh, awesome. thank so you. That there, there. That's very kind of you. You're welcome. That looks really good. And then I know, are, are have you covered what you wanted to cover, Steve? Or did you yep. want to, is there more questions I didn't see wise? I think that's uh, pretty much everything. Awesome. Well, I enjoyed I, watching and I know a lot of our patrons and it looks like uh, some, some other interested people about the Ozarks were watching. So I, I think it was a great success. I want to thank you, Steve, on behalf of the library for joining us. And I will, I, uh, I'm going to check out some of those books myself, actually, and I encourage <laughs> other uh, patrons here at the library to check those books out. Some of them we have. Some of them, you, if we don't have them, please request them so that we can add them to the collection or get them through interlibrary loan. So with that, I want to thank everybody for joining us. Thank you, Steve. Thank and you. Everybody have a great afternoon. You too. Take care.